Have you ever wondered how service desk agents know which tickets they should be focusing on? Or maybe you're a service desk agent and you're wondering what that clock is that's ticking down ominously? Well, you have been wondering about service level agreements or SLAs. Here, we're going to dig into what an SLA is, why they're important, and how tools like Jira Service Management help us keep track of them. Let's jump in. Service level agreements or SLAs are just agreements between groups to do things in a certain amount of time. Typically in information technology, this will be the form of an official agreement between the IT organization and everyone else on how long certain types of tasks will take to be completed. For example, the IT org may commit to completing a password reset in two business days, or maybe they will commit to responding to every ticket within one hour. Now, ideally, every ticket has an SLA associated with it. And this is important because it is a very objective metric that everyone can look at to help figure out what's going on. Now, typically, you don't go in and manually type in an SLA for each ticket. Instead, you use your system like Jira Software Management to find certain criteria. For example, a high priority ticket from a certain group of individuals may have one SLA, while a low priority ticket from the same group will have a different SLA. Larger organizations tend to have more service level agreements because they have a bigger variety of work. However, every help desk should be looking at using SLAs in order to track how they're doing. They are not intended to be a punitive thing. Instead, they're intended to give the team another tool to use to better manage their work. For example, if we agree to a four hour SLA to resolve a password reset, and we're constantly taking more time than that, we want to investigate why. Maybe the system runs slowly, or maybe our team needs more training, or maybe there's a bug or something else. Similarly, if we agree to create a new account in three days and we're constantly doing it in only one day, maybe we can evaluate why we're so much quicker than we thought and see what we can learn from that. So now that we understand what an SLA is, again, just an agreement between groups, let's jump into Jira Service Management and see how they look and how we can configure them to best support our teams. Here I am in Jira Service Management Cloud Premium, but this should be almost identical in every version of Jira Service Management. And I am looking at a ticket. And I can see up here in the top right, there are some SLAs already on it that are already ticking down. Now visually, I can see there are two. One is called Time to First Response. And this is both a generic SLA, one that shows up out of the box, but also an important one. This keeps track of how long it took me as the agent to respond to the customer. And I might just say, thank you, Rob, I've got your issue, I'm looking into it. The other SLA I have is called Time to Resolution, and this says I get 80 hours. Now, the other information I have is when these SLAs will expire, or when I will breach them. In this case, I have 7 hours and 36 minutes left to respond. And it's telling me it's due on March 3rd. Now, this is over the weekend, so this is good news. It means I'm not penalized for not working on the weekends, and I can clearly see when I have to respond by. For my time to resolution, I can see that this is due on March 14th, so I have a little bit more time to resolve this. So right away as an agent, I might come in here and reply to the customer and just let them know we got their ticket. So now that I've responded to the customer, I can see the SLA has changed. I now have a nice little green check mark, and it says that it was met in 5% of the total eight hours. So this is some information that I can use to help improve my process. Maybe I realize I constantly take too long, or I can speed this up. This green check mark also means that the SLA has stopped. It is no longer ticking down because I have responded. I do, however, still have to resolve this ticket sometime in the next 80 hours. Now, frequently SLAs will be displayed in queues, which are essentially saved searches that agents can use to figure out what needs to happen. And in this particular queue, I have a lot of SLAs that are breached. These red SLAs are visually telling me I've gone over the amount of time I have to resolve the ticket. So if I'm an agent looking at this queue, I should probably start with the ones that are the oldest or that have the oldest SLA clock. In this case, I'm 540 hours past my due date. So this is a great way to sort tickets. How much time is left on that timer? And then I should be tackling those first to get them out of the way. And visually, I can see this ticket still has time left on its timer. So I don't have to rush as much for this one. Now, SLAs are managed by a project administrator. To find this setting, I just need to open up project settings and then go down to my SLAs section. Now this screen details my SLAs. 
Here, I can see those two SLAs I saw on the ticket, time to resolution and time to first response. I can edit them, delete them, and then expand them. And by expanding them, I can see information about them. For example, I can see the goals of this SLA. And this is defining what tickets are impacted by it, and then also what the targets are for the SLA. In this case, this SLA is being applied to tickets that are open and have a certain priority. I can see tickets that are critical use a certain calendar. And this is the sample nine to five calendar. And these tickets have 12 hours to resolve. This makes sense because critical issues tend to need more support. I can see highest have 24 hours all the way down to all remaining priorities. The last line in here will always say all remaining priorities or all remaining issues to catch every other ticket. So this SLA will be applied to all tickets, but I can have a differing target for each one. For example, if it's low or lowest priority, it would fall under 80 hours. Now the SLA is applied top to bottom. So first it will track if it's critical, if it's not, then highest, then high, and once it hits a match, it will stop. So this is something important to remember if you're troubleshooting. You can come in here and see the order in which these will be applied. Now I briefly mentioned the calendar, and this is what will keep the clock from ticking over the weekend or on holidays. Up at the top, I have a little calendar icon. And right now I just have one sample calendar, so I'll expand this. And I can see that this is only ticking on Greenwich Mean Time minus 8 or Pacific Standard Time between the hours of 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. Monday to Friday. Depending on my organization, I might want to come in here and add a brand new calendar. Maybe I have a team that works 24 hours. Maybe I have a team that only works East Coast time. I want to make sure that I set that time zone to Eastern Standard. And then I can indicate which days of the week. Maybe this team works over the weekends for a few hours. And maybe they get holidays. So there's certain days that it shouldn't tick down, maybe July 4th. Now, once I save this, I can then apply this calendar to specific SLAs. This gives me a lot of flexibility as I can have different SLAs for different teams or different SLAs for different types of tickets that have different calendars. Typically at organizations I work in, there's one calendar. However, larger organizations may need different calendars. So then I can come into this SLA and I can change the calendar that it's using. And it will now instead tick down based on Eastern Standard Time and over the weekends. So as I'm setting up my SLAs, I want to consider when should the clock be ticking and make sure that that lines up with what my team is capable of doing. I can also come in here and adjust the time targets. Maybe high, I want to give the team a little bit more time. But for those critical ones, I'm only going to give them six working hours to resolve. The next section contains conditions. And this contains information about when the clock should be ticking, when it should be paused, and when it should be stopped. It's important to consider pausing the clock. There might be situations where your team is stuck. They're blocked based on someone else. They're waiting information. Or maybe it's waiting approval. So take time to consider your workflow and ask yourself, when is it fair for the clock to be ticking? And when might my team be stuck based on another team? The last thing we can do in here is change the display. I like to leave it as due date centric, but some teams do like to have it showing how much time is left instead. Now, an important thing to remember about changing SLAs is as soon as you save, Jira will go through and recalculate and update every ticket impacted by it. So if you have a lot of issues, this can take some time. I tend to not make changes to SLAs during the work week, just so I don't surprise anyone. And when I do make changes to my targets or to my goals, I make sure my team knows what's going to happen and when. So that was our time to resolution. We also have our time to first response. The only big difference we would see in here is when it's gonna finish counting. And in this case, when there's a comment for customers. So these are my SLAs. I can come in here and add new ones and I can make modifications to existing ones to best meet my team's needs. If you haven't already, definitely jump into Jira and take a look at these. Getting hands-on will help you understand this concept and how it's expressed in Jira a little bit more. So that is a service level agreement. At its core, it's just an agreement between teams that says, yes, for these types of things, we will resolve them in this many hours or this much time. These are important things. Typically, management on a team would decide these and formalize them with the partner groups. 
However, as agents and as project managers, we're responsible for knowing what they are and for helping ensure tickets meet them. And that's why it's great that Jira has these right on every ticket. And as admins, we can go in and adjust them. So I'm curious, how does your team use SLAs? Drop me a comment. I'm curious to see what SLAs you use and how you support your team to make sure you can hit them all. Also, please like and subscribe. That lets me know you like this content and will help me build out better stuff for you. So I really hope you enjoyed this and I'm really hoping to see you again in one of these again soon. Me again, thank you so much for watching that video. Check out more here and pop down into the description. I've got a blog with weekly content. I also have a lot of online learning on Atlassian stuff and project management. And if you need personalized training for you and your team, reach out and let me know. I'll be happy to get something set up for you. Thanks again for watching and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again soon.